Welcome to the Songwriter Connection Podcast, where we look at the craft of songwriting through the eyes of the songwriter. Each week, we make a connection with a music maker, listen to their songs, and hear their stories. From Nashville, Tennessee, here's your host, Dave Lenahan. I'll tell you something kind of funny behind the scenes thing. I don't like to edit because I'm lazy, and I, but it's also, there's a reason. I wanted this show to be so much like my old radio show, uh, and a thing we did called Fr- 5 O'Clock Friday. And, um, you know, I wanted to invite people in and play their music live on this podcast. And so we did a thing called Live Tape, which I did in television back, way back in the day when I worked in Youngstown. Uh, they gave us a half hour to do our show, and if you messed up, it didn't matter. That's it. It's the way it was, you know. I, I've never been that strict. I mean, I can edit if I want to. And when, it's, when you make a mistake real early in the podcast, you can start all over again, and you don't have to worry. And so this is take two, and I will tell you <laughs> that this is episode number one. Uh, five, five, one, 155 episodes. And up until this point, we've had 154 episodes of songwriting as a craft and the lessons behind the song. Uh, today, we're going to focus in on the business side of, of songwriting and how to make money, uh, how to make even more money from your little babies. And we're going to talk about that. But before I do, I want to plug a podcast from a new friend. Bob Bender has this show called The Business Side of music, And if you haven't discovered it yet, it is really a great podcast. So many interesting guests. He has a video podcast. And uh, I was really uh, proud to have been a, a guest this past week. I'm not sure when it's going to air because he, like me, uh, we tape in advance and uh, leave time for editing and things like that. So, But I'll keep you posted on that. In the meantime, check that podcast out. Bob's got an amazing uh, guest uh, uh, podcast, and you've been on it, Nancy. Yes. Nancy Dickin, haven't you? Yeah. Yes, I, I did. And that's yeah. Maybe about two years ago, twenty twenty one. You guys need to go back. And we've got Nancy, and we've got Bill O'Hanlon, the past guest, and a first time guest, uh, Leslie Bow. And we're going to talk about this new book today. This is a book that I'm telling you what, you songwriter. This is a book you got to have. You have to have this book, the Songwriter's Guide to Protecting Your Songs and Collecting Your Money. And I'll bet you've got a lot of questions, like me, and I've been doing this for a little while, and I'm reading this book, and I'm reading, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Really? Are you kidding me? So um, thanks, you guys, for doing this. And let me just go around the, the table and, and introduce you all. Leslie Bo, I know the least about you. I know you come from Pittsburgh. And since I come from Cleveland, I know we can still be friends because we have been. Yes. Well, yeah. I think Youngstown's close enough. <laughs> Youngstown's close enough. Worked a little while there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you, uh, this isn't your first book. You've had another book, right? Well, I, I had an e-book. An e-book? Um, mm-hmm. It actually was the precursor. Actually, that, that was that was one of the one mm-hmm. of the the, the, uh, the in common things that, that Bill and I had when we uh-huh. met at the Red Door, which we'll get into that, I'm sure, a little yeah. bit later. Okay. Um, but yes, it's just a, an e-book, but... I wanted something that that was just very, very short, quick, to the point. I didn't want anything in depth because mm-hmm. I knew it would take a lot of time to put something together mm-hmm. um, that thorough. Yeah. Um, and That's so I, I just wanted something really, really quick. And so, yes, I did that. Mm-hmm. And um, but it's just it's very, very it it touches the surface of what this book. You're an amazing songwriter. You've got CDs out there that are available and songs and cuts and things. And uh, uh, so we appreciate you being on the show. Later on, we're going to make you play one of those songs because you have to have songs on the songwriter and actually have to play them. Thanks, now, Dave. Now, Nancy Deckett has been on this show a couple times. In fact, one of the most listened to episodes that we have had on this podcast, audio wise, um, has been Nancy's, as we talked about Discover Sooner, her great organization. Nancy's also a cut uh, songwriter and a publisher. Uh, you had a song, Crack the Top 40 in Country Radio, which is what a thrill. <laughs> yes. Uh, so it's good to have you back. Nancy Deckett. Hey, thanks, Dave. So yeah. nice to be back here again. The, and this is your first book, right? Uh, this is my first book. I, and I am the virgin between the two of these two guys. <laughs> I know. And what a great group. I hope you still respect us. I, yeah. I hope you do too. In the morning. <laughs> Well, you know, I would never, I never dreamt of really doing this. I knew I wanted this information out there, and Bill and I had been talking about doing yeah. something like this, and we knew we were going to, I guess, eventually get there, but yeah. um, when the opportunity came up with uh, between Bill and Leslie, uh, Bill said, why don't you jump in? And I said, okay, yeah, let's do it, and cool. little did I know. <laughs> what a team. What, what a team. A team. <laughs> 
Bill O'Hanlon is back with us, and Bill here in a couple of weeks is going to have a show where we're going to focus in on his songwriting career. But today, we're going to talk about the business of music. And Bill, this is your 41st book, is it? I'm 41st. I'm no virgin. Gosh. Let's just say that. I'm, that. I'm well used. I should <laughs> tell you that right off the bat, Bill has had 40, 41 books out there now. Uh, one got him on the Today Show. Today Show. Uh, verb to Love. What, love is a Verb. Love is a Verb. Love, love is a Verb. verb. And um, one that got you on the Oprah show. Do one thing different. Do one thing different. Published by Harper Collins. If you could do one thing different, what would it be? <laughs> well, write, write this book. I would I would go back in time and uh-huh. hand my naive guy who showed up in Nashville, yes. okay. ready to go be a professional songwriter, this book and say, you need to read this because you're going to leave money on the table and you're going to make some crucial mistakes that are going to mess you up a little and let you know this Pretty simple stuff, but it's basic and essential. You need to know this. You caught my wave in the air. That's exactly the answer I wanted you to Oh, get. there you go. That was just there fantastic. Ah, well, Dave and Same I are. Connection right there. We've, oh, written, oh, we've written oh, together the same thing happens <laughs> when we co-write. We go, oh, I was going to say that line. Yeah. Let me ask you this. I'm going to throw this question out. Say I'm a new songwriter, and I've got songs I'm really proud of, but I've never been to Nashville, and I've never had a cut, uh, but I think they're pretty darn good. First thing, I'm afraid that somebody might steal it. What do you think? Well, first of all, we should define what a cut is because if okay. you're that new a songwriter, Let's do that. we all talk in jargon when we get, you know, right, and, we do. and so do professionals and publishers and labels. And yeah. they sometimes say things and you're like, I'm, I don't want to ask, but I don't know what that is. I so a cut is. is a recorded song that's released by somebody, you mm-hmm. or somebody else. And right. so, yeah, if they don't have any cuts and they need to know. What's the first thing? So I'll, I'll some pass. some new writers will say, "I got to sell some. I'm selling my songs. I'm going to oh, sell yeah. my I'm songs, sell or my someone's going to steal them, or right. somebody's going to steal them." As what? a publisher, yeah. just about every single yeah, so month, someone's going to steal my songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As a uh, as a publisher, almost every single month, I get an email from someone who says, "I'd like to sell you my songs." Sell <laughs> you my songs, honey. I just want to. That's put not the works. way it works. Although you, you need this book, <laughs> Willie yes. Nelson did try to sell his songs early on because he was so destitute. Yes, and well, and fifty some, bucks or something. Some of it, yeah, fifty bucks, and mm-hmm. some of his friends would say, "Willie, these songs are great." Like. Crazy. He wanted to sell it for 50 bucks. Yeah. But uh, they said no. And after a while, it was made illegal to sell your song, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, the writing credits. Um, so, yeah, we don't yeah. sell our songs. We typically license our songs. So mm-hmm. that's the first thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Second thing is everybody's so worried about somebody stealing their song. Yes, that's what I'm getting to. Yes. I, well, I will say this. I mean, you know, sometimes it, it could happen. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure people have taken parts of songs or inspirations or parts of melodies or whatever. We've had court cases about that. But mm-hmm. having been in Nashville for eight years, you can't shove your songs down people's throats. <laughs> much less. I wish somebody would They're steal my song. Them. Now, yes. another songwriter might, but probably nobody in the industry would. First of all, they wouldn't want to open themselves a legal thing. Correct. Secondly, they, they hear so many great songs. They oh. don't need to steal your song. Absolutely. Well, plus, you know, I think... Um, Nashville is different. Mm-hmm. It's a different, I, I should say, animal you than say? say Los Angeles mm-hmm. or you know New York. I, you know, here in Nashville, I found you know that there there is there is an honor code. Mm-hmm. There is a writer's code, um, and everybody that writes in Nashville, we know you honor the code. If you throw out a song title, even though you can't copyright a song title, and I want to talk about any, that. anybody can grab a song title. Um, but you know, if we throw out different titles in a right, everybody knows that the honor code is I'm not going to write that title that Bill yeah. that threw out that we didn't write. Oh, mm-hmm. but that's a great title. I'll go I'm write that with somebody that else. Yeah, right. Exactly. Know, yeah. You know, no. I mean. That's always a possibility because if, you if can't If it gets around it. you did that, you certainly would exactly. not a songwriter. And it is a little confused. big town because yeah, the word does get yeah. around if it that's does. your yeah. strategy. Yeah. So I don't know how it is in New York or Los Angeles, but I know that if, you, if you're if you a Nashville writer and you want to write um, in Nashville, there is an honor. There is an honor code. Code. Okay, I want to weigh in on yes, this for just one minute. Yeah. That mm-hmm. Nash- I mean, usually when we're at home from our, you know, our hometown, like like Pittsburgh or right. Youngstown, Ohio, right. Right. <laughs> um, you're not really probably writing at the level where people are in Nashville are going to be attracted to mm-hmm. what your topics are. Are but you saying we have to move to Nashville? I think you know when you come here, though, there is you, you can be in a writer's round. I I know a case of. 
uh, friends of mine who were in a writer's round and maybe were unconsciously, you know, influenced by a song that was sung in the writer's round. And the next thing you know, they wrote a song that sounded just like that. And a lot of times people don't mean to do that, but they do that. And the next thing you know, this song was playing at a major label level. Mm-hmm. And, the, the, you know, and, the, and the major label is having musicologists in to evaluate yeah, what's, yeah. what's real, you know. Let me so ha- you have to be kind of Let me ask you this. Right? As a publisher, have you ever told a writer, I like this song and here's, here's the thing. Don't play that one out because I don't want anybody... Yes, I think when you have something that's really unique, you have to you have to guard that. You have to be careful. I agree, Um, because people in this town are really good writers, and they will maybe write that title better than you do. So, if you got something really great, make sure that you get that song pitched everywhere first. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's my thought. In Nashville, here we talk about, and and, in songwriting in general, and you've talked about this so many, because I've listened Mm -hmm. to every one of your shows, you know that, because I tell you all the time. I come out, I go out every Wednesday, and I take a long walk, and I listen to the podcast. But um, you can't copyright a title, as you said earlier. Nope. And I think people don't know that. I I went to write with two pro songwriters who've written literally thousands and thousands of songs, maybe 5,000 each. Mm-hmm. They're rarely prolific writers. They've been here for years. And I threw out what I thought were my most, my greatest titles and my most unique titles. And I went through 12 of them. And both of them said, written it. And both of them said, I've written that. 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 I'm like... You cannot have written this. I made it up. It was totally unique. <laughs> and yes, written that, written that. Finally, I came up with two things, two hooks, two ideas. And it was called Should Have Listened. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, but I had another one called a month, full, a month of Sundays. And, you know, and they used both of them in the song. Only one was the title. And I'm like, you used up two of my titles and you, you went through 12 before that. So... People do write the same the song with the same title. That's mm-hmm. different from stealing a song. Right. If you really want you can't to copyright it, an idea, right? you can't you copyright can't. an idea. That exactly. It's the form of the idea. Right. It's the melody and the lyrics and the rhythm and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I mean, you know, you want there occasionally. I have an idea. I think that is a winner of an idea, right. and I'm not going to play that song out until it gets out there in some way that I've established that. But of course, what we cover in our book, The Songwriter's Guide to Protecting Your Songs, Collecting Your Money, uh, is when do you copyright a song? When and do you, that was going to be when do you question. because it costs the, we're talking the United money. States here it costs time. costs some money to copyright a song is it worth it again most of the time nobody's going to want to steal your song it's got to be super amazing and the hook has to be amazing but there are times when you do want to copyright your song and when is that <laughs> okay. Well, um, as I recently <laughs> learned, because I wrote this part of the book. <laughs> That's right. Nancy took this on. Oh, my God. <laughs> Honestly, there were so many things that I learned, but um, there's a window. Usually, um, the typical thinking is, I don't want to spend that $65 to... Yeah. I mean, usually you start when you put the song out. You're, you're right, We're writing with independent artists all the time. Right. We put. You know, they decide they're going to record and release the song. And we go, okay, um, now's the, the right time to do it. And then you start thinking about that $65 and it's looking bigger all the time. <laughs> How important it is It used to be $35, right? now it's $65. Exactly. Now it's oh my God. And you can do it in the catalog that makes it harder to find, right? Well, that's you right. can, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, you know, so we put it off and we wait until, you know, millions of people have listened to it. And usually it'll take months, uh, years maybe for that to happen. Yeah. And I've just learned uh, that if you don't call copyright that song in the first three months of it being released or publicly performed Mm -hmm. then you start losing um some protections some protections not everything but you like you still own the song but there are certain statutory rights that are that are automatically do you if you do that in a timely manner so if you've got a song that's out most pro songwriters in town do not copyright the song until it's released. But exactly. as soon as it's released, exactly. that day, Boom. because exactly. Exactly. it doesn't always happen. They'll say, so you oh, you've got a cut on so-and-so, and then the album will come out, and it's like, no, you didn't get a cut on so-and-so. We've heard that story a thousand times. Right. But yeah. when it actually comes out, that day the publishers copyright the song. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask you this. I've always heard that 
the day you write that song, it's you have the copyright. Is that true? Okay, yes, yeah. so you do have a copyright, but you have to register that title and so that song. So when you say copyright to right. the government, you are registering with exactly. you all with the copyright office. It's registered, yeah, because yeah. you have the intellectual property, right? Right at the time of you know uh, that you write it. Right. But as far as the government is concerned, it's when it's registered. We can have a whole another conversation yeah, yeah. Yes. on uh, on that. On, which we you, won't. And which we won't. We're not, we're not even go <laughs> we don't want to go deep we're into the weeds. But yeah. Yeah. I think it's an important point. Let's just clarify this. As soon as the song is put in a fixed form, that could be a Google Doc that you share with your co-writers. It could be you record a work tape on your iPhone. Mm-hmm. Um, as soon as it's in a fixed form, it is copyright according to 1978 copyright law in the U.S., and it's a sort of informal copyright, and you'd have to prove that in court. So, you know, if you yeah. have a, if you have, you know, stuff from the session you did, work mm-hmm. tapes and writing process tapes, which you sometimes record while we're recording, while stamps. we're doing mm-hmm. it, yeah. those are mm-hmm. time stamps. Mm-hmm. You could probably prove it, but if you go through that formal process and you go to court, and because somebody did steal your song, it's way easier to prove it if you've got that date of copyright and yes, yes, it's exactly. automatic. Yeah. It's a big fine, actually, an automatic. You don't have to prove damages. It's just an automatic fine for copyright infringement. So wow. best to do it if you've got a song yes. you think has potential and is out in the world. Always best to do it in a timely manner. That's good. It's, it's that's important stuff to talk about. And that's for lyrics and music. Then you have the sound recording, mm-hmm. which is the actual... The, the, the record. Right, yeah. the record. It's the actual recording. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they, you know, how it was played, the the instrumentation. They don't have records anymore, Dave. You're an old guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, they do. They have vinyl or occasions. Size. Oh yeah, records. Yeah. Yeah. We still call them records. You know, the size. Yeah, yeah. yeah. recording. Yeah. Recording. Yeah. Recording. Probably a better mm-hmm. way to say it yes. these days. Yes, sound recordings. Yeah. What else do you want to know, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> let's go deep. Let's, let's go. Let's, let's take not go step. too far in the weeds, but let's definitely. <laughs> I've got these songs, and and I want them to make money. So I mean, would you tell? Would you say, Dave? I think you should have a PRO. And what is a PRO? <laughs> Go for it, you guys. Well, it'd be a performing rights organization, right? Um, and um, that's you know that's going to be for your performing rights. Okay. Uh, so if it's played on the radio, um, and you know, and there's also you know, BMI Live, ASCAP on stage. Um, if it's so performed if, out, yes, somebody it's performed, plays it live. You yes, are an artist. Plays it live. Yeah. You're right. You're yeah. An artist. Right. Yeah. I, okay, and if you play your song out live, obviously you can register that song that you played it and where you played it. But what's really cool too mm-hmm. is that if you know someone else played it, you can register, register that. that song yep. that was played at that or at that uh, facility or where at that venue. Well, I was saying this to to Dave a while ago. You know, I, I was on Facebook and somebody, some songwriter, put out. Hey, do you, is it really important to claim my BMI live? And ASCAP has a similar thing, and CSAC has a similar thing in the U.S. And there are other PROs, those performance rights organizations in other countries. Um, is it worth it to register my songs that I played out live at a round, like a songwriter's round, or I did you know something in a restaurant or a bar or whatever? Right. And someone said, I pay half my rent with my BMI lives. I, I play out six nights a week, yep. and I play four songs every time I do. Sometimes five, sometimes three, and I was I read that and I was like, "What? I am leaving money on the table because I'm doing rounds you all are the time." If you and that's the thing: most songwriters, Don't honestly, mm-hmm. are leaving money on the table um, because every round that you do, like I did a round last night, mm-hmm. I turn that in every time that I play, as I long as the too, song religiously. As it's, long as it the song just is takes a few minutes, it does, and, and all of a sudden it's money in three months or six let me, months. Let me put it this way: Let's say you recorded it, and you got a CD out there, yeah, and and they pay you per stream, right? Which is it's ridiculous. Mm. We're not even <laughs> into that. We're not going, but you will get more money from your BMI or ASCAP on stage, yes. BMI Live, any day. Then yes. you will on, uh, just getting a stream, well, and yeah. a lot more, as a lot more, as even a if it's songwriter. a small venue, two hundred fifty or less. You know, mm-hmm. yes, as as a songwriter. Because if it's streamed, mm-hmm. it, it, it you know there's a mechanical license that's that that's going to be issued for the stream, which is the mechanical licensing collective. Okay, we're going to talk about that. Okay, okay. Um, term. but those are negotiated rates. You know, 
per streaming company, and they're very, 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 should I say? (laughs) Very, 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 very small when it comes to the songwriter. Less than a half a cent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're going to definitely make more money. Um, you know, by being my life. I got you. Well, I mean, here's the thing, and again, just to talk about the book and why we wrote this, I wanted this book when I came to Nashville because I want to collect... I'm not making that much money from my songwriting yet. Mm -hmm. I'm a psychotic optimist. Um, But (laughs) I want to make sure I collect every penny that's due to me because I want to support myself as a songwriter, as a musician. And Mm -hmm. I was leaving money on the table. I still am because having having written this book and learned stuff from these two who knew stuff I didn't know. We all get this stuff piecemeal. I'm like, wow, I never claimed that. I've got to go and claim that. Exactly. Nancy told me when I first when I first got this book, she gave us three goes, Page nine, right? Nate, there's Just all, go and look at that. Look at page nine. There's that is your life, Dave. That, that will be your money. life. That'll yes. be your yes. financial yes. life it's, and it's your true. legal life yes. as a songwriter. There's something called the MLC. There's uh, I mean yep. they're all how else sound we, exchange. Sound exchange. And, Do we need I, to register with all these lists? And I do want to say, Dave, you know, that while I did say, you know, that the MLC, that the, the, the rate you're going to get is yeah. very small, I, I do want to admit, uh, to, to say that 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 um, uh, Bart Herbison mm-hmm. with um, NSAI, mm-hmm. who is right on, on the forefront of all of that, that the legislation that led Good. to this, um, that they are fighting every day for songwriters to get those royalties increased. So awesome. even though I, I did say they were small, I do want to say that 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 folks like Bart um, are actually uh, out there you know, filing March, to get those increased. March Representative uh, uh, Rashida Tlaib from uh, Michigan oh, introduced yeah. into Congress yeah. Saw that. the uh, Living Wage for Musicians uh, Act. Yeah, And in it, she talked about the things that really struck me was uh, they want to raise uh, the streaming rate to one penny mm. per, per stream. And, and I thought, well, that's not a lot. No, and it's, it's not. But aren't, aren't they at least getting that? It would seem no. like it no. seem You're like a, a richest us, right. those of us who are songwriters, get sure. It's like point zero 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 four eight, yeah. and then if you've got a co-writer that's split it, in half, of your it went up four times race. in the last yes. few years. But it still, it, as, as Again, Les said, it's a whole new can of worms. But so, just let me just leave it at this. As she said, in order for a musician to make minimum wage a month, yes, a minimum wage. She said you'd have to have 800,000 streams of your song in a month. And wow. v- boy, tell you, mm, that's, that's a lot of streams, yeah. you know. So, Nancy, <laughs> tell us what the MLC is. Tell us what the MLC Well, you know, before that, yeah. okay. he talked about mechanical licensing. Yes. So, can we talk about the difference between mechanicals, royalties, and performance? How, and performance royalties. So, so. Yeah. And now so, we'll get to the MLC. All right. Okay. So, performance royalties are any time that you play your song into a public performance. And it can be streaming or it can be you performing. On radio, <laughs> and on the radio? Or, or, um, yeah. Anywhere. Mm-hmm. But I guess the things that you get paid for are things that are in public and even on social media on some ways. Okay, but I yeah. want to get delayed on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I would say... There's, there's some nuance. There so, is, yeah. right. So, and the other side of that is really like licensing your song mm-hmm. to someone to sing and to play it. Right. And so... That's why we don't sell it. We license our right. license. We still exactly. own it, but we that's license right. it. Right. So the Mechanical License Collective was created out of the MMA law. Mm-hmm. They said, okay... Spotify is putting, you know, when an artist puts uh, their song on Spotify or distributes it uh, digitally, um, it's not just a public performance. It's also you have to have the mechanical license that allows you to stream that song out there in the world. And the the higher ups, uh, the you know, like the Spotify's and said, well, we can't find all these uh, songwriters and publishers to be able to license this song. So. And so uh, the response from the United States uh, and Bart Herbison and uh, David Israelite yep. from the NMPA, they were like, okay, we'll create this body called the MLC and the Mechanical Licensing Collective, which you will come there and get a license from us and uh, you will pay us for, 
for streams of songs, and we will distribute it to songwriters and publishers. And if you don't have a publisher, you are your own publisher. Right. And you have to, anytime an artist commercially releases your song, you need to go and list that song yep. with uh, the, the MLC. And I will tell you this, that whatever I make on the MLC is probably 10 times whatever I make on on my PRO because really? yes mm. yeah, I'm not there yet see <laughs> there you go right. we knew no, no, I'm on MLC but yeah. I'm not making as much as oh, I okay. Like but, um, okay okay well, maybe I'm three the, times I'll say uh, okay. three times three times okay three but times. Sure. The, here's the thing. When when Nancy said those streaming services, they just put all that money into escrow. They're earning interest from it. Ooh. It's billions of dollars worldwide. Yeah. And the MLC came along and they said, well, we will have a place where the songwriters can go register themselves and mm-hmm. their songs. Mm-hmm. And they can find them if they're already out there and claim that income. It's a claiming tool, which I love. Despite that... Mm-hmm. The MLC now, it's only been in existence for a couple of years, is sitting on a half a billion dollars oh. of royalties that songwriters haven't claimed yet right. that are sitting and they're making, you know, they're not making interest, they're making interest, but they're not going to take that interest. But instead of Spotify now making the interest and not distributing that money, the MLC has it. They say, please come and get come it. And get That's it. why we exist. Please we all register. A, we all have a mutual friend who we just talked into joining the MLC because he had a big number one song and, and he looked at Spotify. It has over 10, almost 11 million streams. And he goes, I don't think I've collected any of that. I said, well, get on the MLC. Get on the MLC. Register got, it and go to the claim tool. Got some money. Man. <laughs> you got some money. Yeah, and, and so that's just if, so. If, if, if when we're talking about um, mechanical license, yeah, that's one side of it. Uh-huh. Then you have the other side, which would be the physical right uh, sales or the digital downloads. Okay, um, and in that case, then as a songwriter or a publisher, you're going to issue the mechanical license. Okay, good. Okay, so this is. Uh, you know, <laughs> go for it, Nance. I know where you're going. Okay, so I, I really, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about yeah, this today yeah. before I came, and yeah. I really want to say this. Okay, when we're at home in our, you know, we're in Pittsburgh and mm-hmm. we're from Santa Fe and all that, we're we're singing our own songs, and then we come to Nashville, and the next thing you know, we are writing with other people. Right. And some of us are really great singers, and we are really honest to God artists of, of this craft, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And we songwriters who we are maybe more on the songwriting end. We might p- be performing, yeah. um, but we are more like songwriters, right? Yeah. And we are yeah. here serving these artists, and we are trying to get these artists to cut these songs, right? right. <laughs> and then they're all freaked out because they don't understand that, you know, if they do choose to release our song commercially, then they're, we, they need a mechanical license from us. Mm-hmm. And that comes along with a royalty. Mm-hmm. And every, you know, and the way that we, you know, and no one wants to do accounting all day long. No. So <laughs> the way we do it in Nashville, I don't know about New York and LA, is we'd get a, uh, we have artists pay us in advance 12.4 cents per, you know, like a thousand or 20. Like if you go uh, get a cover song over at Harry Fox, they're going to make you license 2,500 songs at a minimum. And, and that's, wow. that'll end up being like something like $300. But for us, yeah. you know, whatever we, our deal is with the artist, maybe it's a thousand. That would be $120. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, and they're like, Oh my God, I just spent all this money on this track. Yeah. And now you want $120 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. split between yeah. all because three of us. Because we're not going to send in an auditor. And to a lot find of out. independent you know? artists yeah. don't really understand right. that they need to to have a mechanical license, the license and they, need the song. To they think if I want to record it I can record it well first of all there's this thing called the right of first recording yes. and we have we those songwriters or the publishers of those songwriters okay. and we're our own publishers because right. we're independent songwriters yep. has to issue a license for that song to be legally released they can record it they just can't release it and so that happened to me recently someone recorded my song I found out about it they didn't contact me Hmm. I found out about it, and I said, well, I need, I need to issue a mechanical license. You need to give me an advance, and he mm-hmm. and ghosted me. That was it. I never heard wow. it. The song never came out. Same producer was working with another artist about eight months later, and I saw on Facebook, because he tagged me, hey, I did this song, you know, Bill O'Hanlon and a couple of other co-writers, right? Danny Myrick and Hal O'Dell. 
And um, I'm recording it at the end of March. And this was the middle of March. And I'm like, no, <laughs> you're not recording it without permission from us. And so I contacted him. He goes, oh, yeah, I, my, the producer just mentioned I needed something like a mechanical license. Do you have one? And I said, yeah, and I need this much money up front. And he was like, I'm glad to do it, sir. He's a very Southern guy. Glad to do it, sir. And he sent me that money, and I distributed it to my other two co-writers. And it's like, I wouldn't have done that before this book. Because I thought, oh, well, if my song's out there. Isn't that great? <laughs> you know, but yeah. that and four bucks will get you a Starbucks, let's just say. Right. Yeah. That's right. And, you know, there's, there's agreements you can make. I've got yeah. friends that yeah. re, re, that were, sure. you, you know, that I'll, I'll say... Yes, yeah, you have my permission. Just I, make sure I get a copy of their CD, okay? Yeah. yeah. You know, exactly. and, and okay. You can do a little bit of like, But I think if it's, you know, if it's a big artist. It's I mean, an outside cut, too. You know, it's yes. not my co-writer. Right. It's, you know, it's an outside cut. And I think you'll need to be a little more legal with it. As long as everybody so agrees, right? You know, yeah. yeah. If that's what you're going to do, then that's fine. Right. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, just do what the, you know, take care of the songwriters, Please you do. know, who wrote the song. Yeah. Well, you do. Because if I, we I, don't, right. there won't be songwriters. That's you know, <laughs> it's, that's very true. That's there used good. to be, I, I'm sure you've heard Say this, and we've yeah, all heard this. That. There used to be 4,000 professional songwriters in Nashville, and I hear, I don't know whether it's true, because these numbers could be kind of made up, 400 professional songwriters in Nashville now that are getting paid, and some of them not a living wage, because we know them, and they have outside jobs, Mm -hmm. including their publishing deal, which pays them a little bit of a, what they call a draw, a little salary. Okay, before we get off the topic of mechanical license, I want to bring this up to everybody. Um, in the olden days, five years ago, <laughs> in the, a lot in the olden days. pre-COVID, pre-COVID, <laughs> yes. BC, yeah. it's the good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in the olden days, uh, selling your catalog was not a big deal. But the, now, you know, there's been all of this sale, sales of catalogs. And right now, where we're functioning in, uh, in, our, in our peer group, right, we don't have a major label cut. But we may have a major label cut because we're putting all the work into it. That's, mm-hmm. that, and that's what, that's what our goal is. And so all of these independent artist cuts, Bill's got over 100. Leslie, I've got over 100, right? I don't have any paperwork. Because that shows that that is in my catalog. Mm. So if I have a, um, a, my mechanical licenses with all of my, you know, Dallas, Cindy, everybody who I've yeah. ever written with th- and who has put those songs out, that is bringing value to my catalog. Wow. And uh, Sharon Clark, the admin who reviewed this book, <laughs> because said, don't you dare put this book out without me looking at this yeah. book. Sharon, oh, said, thank you, Sharon. She yes, said, yes, thanks, Sharon. You know, the music business has changed Mm -hmm. and you may become a very, very, your music catalog may be worth um, more in the future than it is right now. I know there's just the independent artist cuts. They're small. They don't make a lot of money, but having that piece of paper makes a difference. So no matter what you end up getting paid from your co-writers on this thing, just have the paperwork, have Have the paperwork paperwork there. Where do you get that? And in oh, the book, you might the read book. our book which has an example of that. We're going that you, back to the you should book. always go to an entertainment lawyer. It's worth it to get you know your version of the mechanical license because we put a version in there that was vetted pretty well, but. You should always consult an entertainment. It's not going to cost that much for a one-time consultation. Chuck Allen Floyd's here. He's great. great. Yeah. 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 I'm going to do a podcast with him one day. Yeah. Oh, he's, well, he's a songwriter yeah. and an great entertainment song. lawyer, and he knows both sides of it. So that's why we like him, that's especially right. because he really knows his stuff from both sides. Tell you what, we're going to take a little break. Well, we may not get to songs today, guys. This is great conversation. <laughs> I appreciate it. We uh, talking about this new book that's out there now uh, as, this, as we publish this, The Songwriter's Guide to Protecting Your Songs and Collecting Your Money. Don't go away. We've got more to come. You're listening to The Songwriter Connection, connecting with music makers and hearing their songs and stories. Now back to the show with your host, Dave Linehan. All right, let me ask a real basic question. I'm going to go back. Now, there's two pieces of the pie. We've been talking about the songwriter, and there's also the publishing, right? So it's like what? 
half and half? How is it working today? Well, it's half and half and then another third. <laughs> another third. Explain what you mean. What, this is what are you talking about? about? I it's totally confusing. When I got here, it was totally confusing because they go, well... The, I'm in I'm in BMI, which is my PRO, the performance rights and so on. And there's you know okay. ASCAP and CSAC here in the U.S. Yeah. And if you read, I have co- colleagues who are in ASCAP. If you register a song in in BMI, you have two halves of it. Fifty mm-hmm. percent, you know the the uh, songwriting, like the lyrics and the music and the melody and the and the rhythm of it. Mm-hmm. And then there's the publishing of it, which used to be sheet music. But now it's just generally, that's the other side. That's the people who license your song. That's the ones who own the rights to it. And so that's kind of the, the two sides of it. In, in BMI, we register those with 100% writer side right. and 100% publisher Publish, side. Yeah. You go to ASCAP. It's, it's 50. And they, re- they register at 50-50. So my 50, co-writers 50, are registering 100%. at 50-50 if they write a solo song. Right. The math gets really crazy when there's it's three. Oh, <laughs> yeah, really yeah, 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 there's three. BMI, you know, 200, and, and then you're trying to... Yeah, yeah. 200, ASCAP, and you're trying 100. to... Yeah, it's 100. It gets that extra little... Uh, like, but well, then yeah. there's the other side, which is the performance, right, which we've already talked about. Mm-hmm. So you, you really own, if the song's recorded, you own 300%. A writing side, if you've written it yourself, a publishing side, and a performance side, and, and the recording side. That's what you mean, though. Yeah. The, the recording. The recording, recording. Side, recording. Which is, uh, yes, yes, exactly. Yes, that's, that's the mechanicals. mechanicals wow. Right. And then yes. if somebody performs that, that's another bit. So, But really, the, if the song is recorded and out, you really have three 100% pieces if you have recorded that song put it yourself and written it all yourself and again it gets complicated if you co-write it if with one other person two other people eight other people 19 other people and (laughs) which happens in pop i guess yeah and um and if somebody else puts the song out or if it's a duet or Mm -hmm. whatever so it can get complicated we've tried to make it as simple as possible in this book because it can get overwhelming. I mean, you just heard me explain that, and I was confused when I got here. Yeah. I was like, what? There are two sides to it? Or there are three sides? What? <laughs> right. Well, and and again, um, we're just speaking for for Nashville. Right. Um, but in Nashville, typically, if you have three writers, you split it three ways. Yeah. I know some folks say, well, I, I did the, the, the majority of the lyrics, so I'm getting 90% of the lyric. Not okay, um, I will stop in and say that uh, there were three lawyers that helped us with this book, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they informed me uh-huh. that it's copyright law, that as many people write the book, it's an even Steven share. Uh-huh. Write the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah the song, and that yeah. is copyright law. Of course, you can do it is any it way you want to. Is yes. it the same with books? No, yes. it's no. not the same it's with books. But, um, no. It may be the same with books, yeah. but uh, I don't know, but... That's the default, but you can make a different arrangement. But oh, yeah. you have to yes, put you that. Can make a you have to put that in writing. You have but to, it has to be agreed upon, and, and, yes. and, and yeah. probably agreed upon up front because sometimes then they have to litigate it afterwards if they don't agree. But the nice part about Nashville is it is that right. There, there's a joke, and you've heard it too. You know, if you're in that room and you say anything, it's a word for a third because usually there's three writers. In the case of our cats, like it's, 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 it's a word for a, a word fur, for a fur for a third or fur for a third. Fur for a third. Fur for a third. Fur for a third. Yeah. <laughs> My cat likes to join the rights. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Too, that's right. <laughs> so, so you know, we we like to get that clear up front, and there right. are split sheets there are. that one can do that. And I, when I first came the book, don't you? When I, yes. And when I first came here, I brought split sheets to my rights in Nashville, and people looked at me like I had two heads because it's understood here. But if I were in LA, I bring yeah. a darn split sheet to yeah. my yeah. session. You better. It's different. And, right. And, and get it all clarified when mm, that's before absolutely. that song is written or after that song is written in the session. Get everybody to sign off on it. Literally put their signature on it before Free. you leave that room. I and agree. register your song right away with your PRO. Yes. yes. Absolutely. <laughs> it doesn't take that long yes. to do, does it? No, it's and with the document. Yeah. You, you want to make sure that you get all the PRO information from all the writers. I know whenever I when I have a write, I, we uh, have a Google Doc, and uh, everybody puts in their PRO. I have tried to chase down some of my co-writers from years ago that yep. didn't do it, and I they've ghosted me. I can't get it. I can't <clears> register the darn song. 
That's true. It's really hard. But, you know, the, we usually do as a Google Doc, even if we're in the same room, to co-write. Google and Docs, I, if you're not familiar, yeah. tell them about it. It's free. It's a free service from Google. I'm sure we pay in, in attention and advertising uh, sure. dollars for Google. But... Um, but, and they're analyzing every bit of everything we do, so we pay it a certain way. But it's free to use in terms of monetary stuff. And we use that to document because you can go back through every version from Absolutely. the moment someone started that document. And we try to get all that information, that yes. PRO information. I ask people to put their <clears throat> contact information, yep. their, their cell phones, their email, as well as their PRO Writer's information and publishing information if they have a separate publisher. And the real cool thing about Google Docs is we were all co-writing a song here. We each, ha- I started Doc and I sent yeah. an email out to each of you. Right. You open it up and now we can see in real time. We are next to each thinking. other and the nice yeah, part yes. about that is that I can throw ideas in while right. you're singing and you're actually doing something right. so I don't interrupt you. Right. But then you look down and go, love that line and you start singing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you go, I don't like that line and you change it. And so and you it's know, really cool. And it depends Very on your style. If you feel, uh, if you're technical and you want to do that, that's just a great way. I was writing the other day and uh, I'm old school. I like a, a piece of paper and a piece of paper. And a pen yep. and I, I get it. I, and some people are like it. I'll keep the Google, the Google Doc. Yeah. And what is your email address anyway? Because I'll mail it to you, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's um, great. Yeah. So. And a good friend, Lucy um, LeBlanc. Yeah, yeah, she's really good at. And Not to mention any names, but Lucy LeBlanc. Lucy LeBlanc, yeah. 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 <laughs> good friend. Another prolific songwriter. Another one, yeah. Another yeah. Um, she, she has a good way. She keeps track of what's the next steps, action items. Oh, I love that. <clears throat> yeah, because. We, we often write songs and they sit in our hard drive. And Lucy's yeah. like, okay, who's going to do what by then? Or who's going to record the work tape? Who's going to contact the producer if we decide to do a demo of this? It. And I by what it. date? And then the next yeah. time we write, she goes back and looks at the old dog and says, hey, you said you were going to contact so <laughs> You so forgot, and like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, sorry, as Lucy, As soon as that session was done, it was out of my mind. <laughs> and, uh, I forgot. And so Lucy's great about that. And I think that's <laughs> a really good use for that. Wow. Again, to follow up, because songs can slip through the cracks, especially when you write a fair amount. Mm. It is a business. Yeah. We're leaning at the it is. business. Let's get the business really? act together. You know, I used to be a therapist, and therapists are all flaky and feeling oriented. You know, and they hated the business, the tax side, and getting those. You know, the legal oh. entities. Songwriters are very much the same. We're so into our feelings and the creative <laughs> act. <laughs> all you have to do is just spend a little time getting your business act together. It doesn't have to be the major focus of your life, but if you don't do it, mm-hmm. you are shooting yourself in the foot and leaving money on the table to use two different metaphors. And I want to say that there is one good, another good reason why you do that song split sheet and it's because some of our co-writers end up getting a publishing deal. Yes. Mm-hmm. And there yes. you are and they're trying to get their catalog together mm. and they're trying to you know, be able to you know, show their new publisher what they have. And if you don't have that, I mean, if, if you have a song Song split sheet, then you have a record, and that helps yeah. you a lot. Yeah. We're so serious great. songwriters here, people. Now, when it you comes know, to... Oh, go ahead. I'm oh, good. sorry, Dave. Yeah, no, I, I was going to say, um, you know, as a songwriter, I know that when I first started, mm-hmm. um, you know, I didn't really understand how any of this worked. Um, I just knew that I loved to write songs, and I wanted to write songs, and I wanted to, to release albums, and I wanted to release my work to the, mm-hmm. to, to the world. Right. But I really had no clue how any of it worked. And that's that was the foundation of this book mm-hmm. is because, you know, here in the U.S., like our healthcare system, it's all over the place, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's, it's very disjointed. It's, and, and so that, that was what actually was, was the creative force behind this book was you've got to click here, click here. Well, I get I understand a little bit of this. Well, I need this, and, I, and it's all over the place, and it's overwhelming. So, as as a songwriter, mm-hmm. I knew nothing. That's the reason. So, going back to this, if you are a first, uh, you're just getting into songwriting, or you've been in songwriting for 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 years, this book really, really gives you a firm foundation in a very simple, easy to understand way. Um, because there, there are other resources out there it. it's amazing. that are thousands of pages. Like if I ask you, Thanks. if you want to do a cover song, can you just record it and put it out? Can you? 
Nope. 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 <laughs> Got to get permission. <laughs> Got to get a license. But there exactly. is a way to do it. It's not that hard. And you need to do it. It's not that expensive, typically, yeah. either. And so there is a way to do that. You just need to know those simple just, things. Yeah, so the, the book. The book. The book. Where is it available? <laughs> uh, well, Amazon. Uh, Amazon. Amazon. We prefer people to go to Amazon because we want to develop a little, you know, a little momentum yeah. with that. And if you leave... A review. Leave a review. Oh, no, my God. That yeah, was, well, you, you know, Nancy was saying she was talking to somebody who knew about this, and they said, if you get 20 reviews, it'll make a difference. If you get 50 reviews, it'll make a major really difference. A difference. So if you Absolutely. would be willing to do that, if you get the book, please just, again, it's like following up, you know, like Lucy does with the songs, mm-hmm. go back and put a little review. If you like the book, if you yeah. got some value out of it, if you made some money from it, go on and put a little review on there for us. <laughs> That'll help other songwriters realize there's value. We'd really appreciate it. And I'll tell you, it is very easy to read. It's, it, and I know you think a lot of what we're doing is... And there's a lot of pictures. A lot of pictures. Lots of pictures. <laughs> forms. <laughs> and you may be thinking this. Oh, this is going to be too confusing. It's not. They really spell it out for you in a nice way. Okay. Again, the book is called "The Songwriter's Guide to Protecting Your Songs and Collecting Your Money." You need this if you're a serious songwriter and you're if you're considering this as a business. It is a business, and you know it's like my friend Tony Kippins always used to say. He'd say, and he's he's British. I can't do the action accent, but uh, he'd say, uh, "It's it's not about the money." It's about the effing money. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I want to talk Just about money. Yeah. How about some money for nothing? That's what I... You I, got... Okay, you guys. Go there. I've got... I wanted to ask... And your chicks for free? And yeah. your chicks... <laughs> money for nothing. Dude. Chicks are optional in this <laughs> one. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> all right. No. Thanks, Dan. Well, it's different to the meaning of slits, <laughs> right? I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> <It's> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't say it out loud. I don't think I did. <laughs> If you are out there writing songs and you and whether you're and you and even one person has recorded your song, you haven't even recorded your song, but one person has, you qualify to be uh, as a publisher because we are all self administered songwriters, we are our own publisher. You and remember that's 50% of the song. Oh, that's right. You qualify to sign up for the NMPA.org National Music Publisher Association. And I haven't done okay, that. This, I need to do that. Okay, that is not quite, and right now is the time to do it. Okay. Let's um, write that down. Say it again. What is it? <laughs> NMPA. NMP. This NMPA. is Chapter 7 National of the National Music Depot. Publishers Chapter seven. Association. Yep. Yeah, uh, what does it say again? What's it, what's it? National Music Publishers okay. Association is it the last one? Okay. That's right. Yes. And why is that important? This is important because this is David Israelite who ever ever since the MMA uh, was passed, uh, companies like Peloton have started using <gasps> Spotify and oh. things like that in their product. Yeah, and the NM and the NMPA went and said you can't just you be using that music without without paying these songwriters. Yeah, okay, this is a special use. Not I mean Spotify is one thing, but using Spotify in a product is something different. Wow, and Didn't and know so, that. that's right. So it gave them license to go to these companies as well as to create a a way for these publishers or these companies to pay songwriters. And again, the issue is. We can't send money to various publishers. We'll spend all our time. They said, do a licensing deal with us and all of your songwriters. We will distribute the money to them. Therefore, uh, so for me, I signed up for the NMPA. Uh-huh. And during the pandemic, was I first got my, got my first two checks that year. I got a check for twenty eight hundred dollars. Oh my goodness! I almost fell on the floor just for. It's called an opt in agreement. Just as a member, when they do a deal with some, with some company like uh, Snapchat or. <laughs> or That's Peloton. Not, right. But here's the, the, right. here's the deal. I mean, that, <laughs> there's that kind of money. Yeah. There's yeah. that kind of money that you can get, and they'll do your taxes for free. Are you right. kidding me? I'm not kidding you. The NMP, if, no, wait. wait. H&R Block. Okay, wait. If you live in Nashville or L.A. and you're a songwriter slash publisher, 
you, they will do your. They will give you six hundred dollar credit. Yeah. To so get your. There's a more complicated. To, you won't the, get it all covered. So. Whoa. And yes, yeah, so the NMPA is a fantastic organization, and I mean, I haven't, I have not gotten two twenty eight hundred dollars checks. I only got one, but now it's more like <laughs> that was probably some catch up or something. Yeah. No, but I usually make. It costs a hundred dollars a year, but I usually make. Um, you know, four or five hundred dollars. Way more back. But also, more, they are right. advocating for us at yes. the federal level and they're getting us more money, which right. they did when that's, that legislation called the MMA passed a few years right. ago. That right. organization and NSAI and a few other organizations, SONA and a few other Honestly. people, went and got us more money because they had members that that's they awesome. have membership fees that could support them going to Washington and doing that lobby. Right. So go do uh, Chapter 7. We'll tell you there's a couple of um, music reports. Um, you know, so there's a couple of organizations. It is kind of like money for nothing, you guys. You'll they'll That's send so you an good. agreement that says you will opt in, and I go yes. It takes five minutes to do it. <laughs> and I'm like, this is five the minutes. Five That's minutes. good hourly right. rate. Okay. Now, do you have to register as a publishing company as well with your PRO? But they, um, you they do an ASCAP. You don't have to in BMI. Oh, is that? I did in BMI. Right, 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 right. I did too, and I didn't yeah. need to. But in ASCAP, you'll only get half your money. Right. Mm. Exactly. Wow. Right. You as ASCAP, you have to unless you only care about getting half of your money. <laughs> I went like, but I think you want all of your money, not halvesies, holesies, holesies, <laughs> holesies. I know and a guy. I know a guy's on airplane with an artist. <laughs> and he had he had some cuts before, and he said, "We're getting ready to do an album. Do you, do you have any new stuff?" He goes, "I just wrote this," and he gave him a cassette. We just and he was the sole writer. He had all of his publishing, and it went to number one for a few weeks. Mm. Dude made a lot of money. Wow. That's a lot, lot of money right there, right, right there. So, and if you didn't have a separate thing and you were an ASCAP, mm-hmm. you would miss half that money. Half that money. <laughs> That's right. And yeah, yeah. so That's right. I so, mean, simple things, just what Nancy was saying. Yeah, I mean, simple things. That it didn't take that long. You no. just sit down and do it. Get it done one time and then you've got it for and, the future. And it's just knowing that you need to do it. <laughs> you're right. That's you're right. the Leslie, reason nobody why, told right? nobody told That's us that when we exactly. arrived here. They should pass out know. this book to new songwriters getting right, off though. the bus. Yes. Getting <laughs> off <laughs> Southwest Airlines. Yeah. Cuz you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Just have you know just have Nashville Tourist Association say, "You songwriter, you need that book. We're going to buy it. thousands of copies. Yeah, and that would be great. That would be good. <laughs> we really and they can make free parking for songwriters in Nashville, too. Uh, that's that's another thing. Yeah, not just to. songwriters. All musicians. I <laughs> all musicians. Because you go downtown and you go play and you lose money. You do. Uh, $25 wow. to park. I got $8 in tips. And yeah, that's right. Oh, and I had a beer. Right. So I yeah, that's right. And money. they just recently added parking stations Oh. All throughout Nashville now. Yeah, it used to be you could find some cheap, you find, or you know, you could find yeah. either cheap. Not anymore. And it's twenty four hours. Well, here's the other thing: the musicians' union just negotiated a discount for musicians to park in Nashville Did at they really? certain at certain you know those those uh, uh, QR stations. code places that oh, you yeah. park. They just negotiated, so we should find out about that. I just heard that the other day with one of my coworkers. That's good. I want to find out about that. And maybe the NMPA did it too. We should find out. We should. And a lot of places will validate your parking. You know. Yeah. Uh, Commodore Grill does that. They validate. I'm a therapist. I can validate you as a human being. <laughs> we all need more validation. Yeah, yeah. I, I can, I can give don't. validation. <laughs> okay, but you'll still have to pay for parking. <laughs> but how does that make you feel? Right? <laughs> okay. How does it make you feel I'm to pay sorry. $25 for parking? <laughs> how does that make you feel? <laughs> Nancy, I'm sorry. You had a parking. Okay, tip of the week for parking in Nashville. Okay. Okay. Wherever it says happy parking, do uh-huh. not go there. Don't go there. You will not be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I will not lead to happiness. Okay, yeah. good. The only Thank happy Nancy. people there are the owners. Right? I'm yeah. happy parking. Yeah. <laughs> or Uber it. Yeah. Uber it. That's U- smart. Uber's that's getting expensive. Because today. you will be supporting songwriters if you Uber, I guarantee. Yeah, a lot of a lot Uber of driver will be a songwriter. Almost actually, guaranteed. I've met so many songwriters driving Uber and Lyft. Oh my gosh. And being bartenders. 
Ed I Norton. used to and drive, Wayne Trace, and Trace. then Lower Broadway. Yeah, turned me against yeah. <laughs> driving oh, Uber. Oh man, oh said, man, that'll do. I'm you, not man. doing this anymore. Yeah. Driving down Lower Broadway. Oh, yeah, it's a hornet's nest. And then today you got to worry about chairs falling from. <laughs> <laughs> no <I'm> kidding. <laughs> okay, so we diverge, and I do want to say because I know we're running out of time. Yeah, we really are. I, um, there is this chapter in this book. It's called your publisher playbook. Mm. Okay, if you get to the point where someone wants to record your song and distribute it Mm -hmm. there is a step-by-step thing that it will tell you exactly what to do and it isn't you know yes do the mechanical license when we show you how to do the mechanical license but also there's you know what is on the pro already you need to make sure the pro knows that so and so bailey zimmerman just you know recorded my song okay you need to send a revision over there and Mm -hmm. make sure that they know that you know what's going on with your song like all the organizations so that's like a step-by-step all the way through that's so what valuable. to do you know the pro the mlc the the sound exchange i mean there is a step-by-step you know my first nashville cut i didn't have a clue i wish this book existed yeah i didn't know what to, i called Me the too. songwriter friend i go what do we do yeah i know you've done a lot of these what, what's you know and he kind of stepped me through it but uh yeah um but you need the book need yeah the book. And, and plus two dev you know in um in chapter nine uh, there's also a, a good resource because good, there's good information there mm-hmm. that if you're if you want to get um, develop yourself more as a writer, mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of different uh, organizations. Discover Sooner being mm-hmm. Discover Sooner, yes, yeah, Nancy's uh, company, which is yeah. uh, um, awesome. Yeah, um, but there's others as well. So th- there's 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 a lot of other information. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so this book is a really good general all around. Um, resource if you're a songwriter. You know, we found that we all three of us had belonged to NSAI. That's right. Yeah. Nashville and Songwriters Association. Global yes. Songwriters mm-hmm. with yep. Sharice Voltori, right. Discover Sooner, and right. Songtown. 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 Yeah. Except all for me. The, all I need to join Song. I've never ah, I know. Oh, yeah. I've learned Songtown. so much. From so, it's oh, amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. That's how we oh, yeah. can. Yeah. 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 We connected. Actually, um, all of the different the, the, the resources, uh-huh. um, the, the really? links that are in the book. Awesome. Like for Brent Baxter, Songwriting Pro, we've got Barbara Cloyd, Flavor Publisher. It's amazing. Um, all of those. I've actually done all of those. <laughs> yeah. So I, mean, I totally, I mean. Yeah. And you, you Great. know, you buy the book and we'll give you updates on a website that Nancy yes. worked yes. her buns off to create and made. Yeah, make Nancy worked cool. really hard on that. So, so thank uh, you. QR code, first page of the QR book. QR code, yeah, 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 to go up there and um, we'll update it all the time because the laws are always changing and the, the procedures really are. are always changing. Yeah. So we got to keep it up to date. We knew it would be out of date. Uh, some small pieces of it would be out of date sometime and we'd have new resources. Right. And, and in Nashville, you know, it's a community. Yeah. Um, and is. so that web page as a resource, you know, you know, that this is you know, how you can stay connected yeah. to this community. Right. In the Summer's Guide community. We're going to have to leave it. But yeah. before we go, and I'm sorry we didn't get to do any music today. And this is the first podcast that we've done. I think we've had no music. But I think this is so important to get this information out there. And the last thing I want to leave, leave you with is Discover Sooner. And I want, to, I want you to tell everybody about your wonderful community and, and, <laughs> and, and how to join. Yeah. Okay, well, um, thanks so much for making that opening, Dave. Um, okay, Discover Sooner. Uh, you know, when I got to town, it was just like, I you, you knock on a lot of doors and they just stay locked. <laughs> and there's no way to meet anybody. And then if, if you meet a publisher and they like your song, oh my God, you're, you know, walking on cloud nine. And yes, it's just, um, it's, a, it's tough to break into. And I will not say, and I want to tell you all that it's just as tough for, the industry itself, they see all kinds of doors. No matter how high you are, there's always a door higher here in this town. <laughs> so, like, we got to start somewhere. <laughs> so, Discover Sooner, we, uh, I just, it's everything that I ever wanted myself as a songwriter. Mm-hmm. I can pitch my songs uh, once a month. The, uh, you know, we put a new publisher in front of people that they will meet online they will actually be able to speak a word or two so if you ended up seeing them you know that publisher you know at some writer's night you can say hey i pitched my song to you or something that's right so there's a a monthly pitch and then we have some really special programs where we do a long-term hookup so to speak with the publisher writer experience that leslie and i during the pandemic we're sitting i'm sitting on the porch and you know like we went through all the things in town that you know songwriters can do 
and we and we just tried to design a great program that would allow you know a real long term relationship to develop. And both of these guys have been a part of that yep. program from time and Nancy to time. brought it to life. Great I stuff. Did. And you, um, you know, and we have a sync challenge, which you know we actually have people who had we got eight songs placed in a movie. And wow. we're very excited about oh, that. Awesome. That's and it just awesome. keeps it getting better, these kinds of things that we're doing. It's just all the things that songwriters need to, you know, grow themselves or be put in a position where they can uh, see where the bar is. We all know we went to pitch meetings when we first got there and we're like, oh, that's great. Oh, my song sucks. <laughs> you know? The bar is way higher. Yeah. Now. Yeah, the bar is higher. I can higher. barely see it from here. But the first time one of those pitch, pitch sections that they took your song, you're like, <gasps> oh my oh, God. God. I'm making some progress. Oh, you're on cloud nine. You're like, yes, you are. I'm getting, get them. <laughs> The big time. <laughs> Keith Urban's going to cut my song next week. I'm exactly. sure of it. Get some champagne here. Yeah, there you go. And then you don't hear from them ever again. Yeah, that's you realize right. you know, that, Oh, you had to just throw all down here. Right? Right? You had your momentary dopamine uh, hit. Well, thank absolutely. you, Dave, for having Bill, us. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. success to all of you. And thank I you so thank much. you for taking the time. And thank you for this book. Go to Amazon and order The Songwriter's Guide to Protecting Your Songs and Collecting Your Money by Bill O'Hanlon, Nancy Deckett, and Leslie Bow, our guests on the Songwriter Connection today. Thank you, guys. Valuable stuff. So Appreciate what you did. Thank you for listening to the Songwriter Connection podcast. Find us on social media at Songwriter Connection. Also, listen to Dave Lanahan's Nashville Connections radio show. It streams live every Friday morning on WOBL and WNOI. Look for us on Facebook and YouTube. See you next time on Songwriter Connection.